Welcome back to the channel. Thanks to my sponsor PCB Way. In the last part we made two control pads. I thought they were a little bit bulky so I redesigned it, made them slimmer, more attractive. Uh, you saw them in the intro and I'm putting them together right here. I'll put both versions on my Patreon page so you can download or build them both. The rubber feet underneath are not mandatory but I don't like it when it slides across my desk so that's why I put them on. And then it's finally time to put it in the ESP home and start coding. Create a new configuration and give it a name. Then select your board. Congratulations, you just added your first configuration. You can choose skip or install. If you're gonna paste the whole YAML file in, choose skip, choose edit, paste the whole YAML file in, then choose save and then click install. Now we're gonna download the file, open ESP Home Web, connect to the ESP32 and install the file we just downloaded. When you're trying to install but it doesn't connect, it keeps showing you the connecting sign. Press the boot button on the ESP32 while connecting until it says erasing. Congratulations, you just installed an ESP32 configuration. I usually start with substitutions and this way all the variables that can change or need to be changed uh, frequently are on top of the document and when you place comments in front of them you can easily find them and change the values you need to change. After the substitutions we'll get to the basic settings you need like board configuration, global settings, logging, API, OTA, Wi-Fi, uh, web server. You can always slow this video down or take a look at the YAML file in my Patreon page. First we're gonna make an ID for the time, we need that later in our display. Then we are configuring our LED lights and making partitions so we can uh, control every different LED or set of LEDs. After lights we're configuring our binary sensors we put our buttons in here like the rotary button and the four key switches. Um, I'm declaring on multi-click here so you have single click, double click and long press. You do have to do some extra configuration that will be later on in this video. Then the normal sensors, we get some values from Home Assistant from sensors to use in our display. We declare the rotary encoder here and for the Wi-Fi signal I do some special configuration that the LED light turns a different color depending on the strength of the Wi-Fi signal. And finally the text sensors, here we put the information about the Wi-Fi connection we have. Then we declare the fonts, I install my fonts in a subdirectory in ESP Home. You can make as many as you want. Then we start to configure the display and tell it to show the current time. After we complete the display section we're gonna go back to our time section and we're gonna give a command that every night at 10 o'clock all the lights will be turned off and at 8 o'clock in the morning all the lights will turn on again. The Wi-Fi status LED will turn on again after 15 seconds. You can remove this section or change the times to whatever you want. 
Then we're going back to the board configuration and tell to turn all the lights on when the ESP Home is turned on. Otherwise all the lights will be off until you do something. Then it's time to save and install. The installation will fail because the encryption key we entered in this configuration is different than the one we installed on the ESP32. So we have to cancel this installation, exit the editor, then choose install, plug into this computer, then wait for the project to be compiled, download the bin file, Open ESP Home Web, connect to your ESP32, and then choose Install, choose the right BIM file, press OK, and choose Install again. Again, when it's connecting, press the boot button until it says Erasing, and then release the button. After we installed this BIM file, we have working buttons and a working clock. But let's change the display. Before we put in the Wi Fi signal strength code, I'm putting in an extra configuration that changes the contrast of the display according to the current time. Then the code for the Wi Fi signal is really easy. You got four rectangles and According to the strength, they are filled or open. The tough part here was finding out which location to start, which location to stop, and how it looked on the screen. Then save it again and install it. Okay, now we can see the Wi Fi signal strength on the display. Let's add some more stuff like a name and a line. After we added this, we're going to save and install again. OK, now we can see control pad version 1.0, a line underneath and the Wi-Fi signal strength. Now we're going to add a clock and two temperature sensors, one for indoors, one for outdoors. I installed a font called Material Design Icons web font to get the right symbols and I put them into the fonts in the YAML file. This way I can address them here and put them in the right place of the display. Then again we save and install. And we can see we have the clock and the symbols at the right place. The temperatures are not there yet because Home Assistant doesn't know this device yet. To add it, we go to Settings, Integrations, and configure the newly found ESP Home control pad. I point it to the right area or just click Finish. After we've done that, you'll see the temperatures appear. Now we integrated it in Home Assistant. Let's see if all the buttons and the LED lights work. All the different buttons you see here are configured in the YAML file by declaring the different partitions. You can make a partition with one LED. You can make a partition with multiple LEDs. Just how you see fit or how many different configurations you want. Just keep in mind that if you change something with one partition and it contains LEDs from other partitions, the last one set will overwrite the previous one. They seem to all work. Now let's test out if we can change all the colors.
This seems to work all fine, so next step is to add a second page in the display. We declare a new ID uh, with the name page2, then uh, tell it what you want it to show. In this case we want to show the details of the Wi-Fi connection and the uptime of the ESP32. And when we're finished we're going to press save and install again and see how it looks. As you can see, you can show anything on this display, so please like and subscribe, you would really do this channel a favor. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is best known for manufacturing PCBs, but they also do CNC machining, 3D printing and much more. Also handy is the PCB prototype assembly, go check them out on PCBWay.com. I am building a basic automation and just to show what is possible with this control pad. You can make it as intricate as you want. After you're done with the first button, you can just duplicate it for the rest of the buttons and change the action it does. You see me use choose a lot because you can do a lot of options with one automation with different variables, different conditions and that makes it very versatile. And when I'm finished, I'm gonna duplicate this for the rest of the buttons. And when we're done, we're going to test in this overview if the automations are triggered when you press the button. And as you can see, it clearly does. Now we know the trigger works, we're going to customize the color of the LED and the brightness of the LED when you press the button. Using the RGB code you can choose whatever color you want. And then when you're done it would look something like this. To make multi-click work we have to add some lines in the YAML file and first of all we have to add events. In events we specify which events we'll have. We'll have single click, double click and long press. And then in the binary sensor we'll specify that single click will trigger the event single click, double click will trigger the event double click and long press will trigger the event long press. After this we're going to change the automation a bit. When the event is triggered we're going to look for a specific state of the event. And if it's single click, double click or long press, do that action. And now it's time to see the final result.
scoort hij op alle knieën met je gamma voor je pas. Moet je leggen, kick af. I had to turn off the sound of this clip because there was some music playing in the background and I don't want to get in trouble about that. This does give me the opportunity to ask you if you like this video please leave a like and consider to subscribe to my channel. This would help me out a lot. The last thing to show you is the working volume button. Now we almost reached the end of this video and I just wanted to show you a different version of this control pad I printed in translucent PLA from Bamboo Lab and the effects are really amazing. As always, thanks to my Patreon. Please like and subscribe, or you can support me on Patreon. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next project.